Yes, amen. Jeremiah chapter 8 today. We're going to begin reading with verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 10. It says, Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to those who shall inherit them. For everyone from the least even to the greatest even given to covet, is given to covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. For they have healed, for they have healed the brokenness of my daughter, of my people, superficially, saying, peace, peace, where there is no peace. Where they were they ashamed when they have committed abomination? They have not all, they were not at all ashamed. Nor could they blush. Listen, there's something to be said when a people in a society can't blush anymore. That's a seared conscience when you can't blush anymore. There's things that go on that ought to embarrass us in this world today. Wouldn't you agree? Therefore, they will fall among those who fall in the time of their punishment. They will be cast down, says the Lord. I will surely consume them, says the Lord, and their vine and or figs on the fig tree and the leaf shall fade. And the things that I have given them will pass away from them. Why do we sit still, assemble ourselves and let us enter the fortified cities and let us perish there? For the Lord our God has doomed us and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of health, but there was trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan and the whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. For they have come and devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell in it. See, I send serpents against you, adders which shall not be charmed, and they will bite you, declares the Lord. My sorrow is beyond healing, and my heart faint within me. Listen, the cry of our daughter of my people from a faraway country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images, with foreign vanities? The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we were not saved. For the brokenness of the daughter of my people, I am broken. I mourn dismay as has taken hold of me. Listen, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has not the health of my daughter, of my people, recovered? This morning I would, if I had a title, it would be that. Is there no balm in Gilead? Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your presence in the house. And Lord, I thank you today that I've sensed you close for days. Lord, I ask today that you would anoint these lips of clay. Lord, that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive what you would say to your people today. Lord, let us be careful with your word and with your presence and with your spirit. And we'll be careful to give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Is there no balm in Gilead? No physician in the land? This was the cry of Jeremiah the prophet, known commonly today as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah wasn't... He didn't particularly, it seemed, want the office 
it, it was a hard time. It was a, it was a time when there was the, they were looking at, at the at idolatrous land so much to the point that Jeremiah's task was to take the word of the Lord to the people of a judgment and a coming captivity. Many of us quote often uh, 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 the verse of hope from Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So it's a plan to prosper you. It's a plan for your good and not of evil. And that's the hope of of the prophet. But we we seldom go on to read that that the hope of the people was the coming 70 years of Babylonian captivity because of their idolatry, because the priests wouldn't stand, because the prophets wouldn't prophesy, because it says that they cried peace when there was no peace. It says it was a superficial covering and a superficial word in that day. He, he, He begins to pronounce the coming doom, the coming judgment He begins to talk about the times that were ahead and his heart's cry was, is there no bomb in Gilead? What is this bomb of Gilead? At the, in, the, in the physical, there was, a, there was in the wilderness of, the, of the, Jordan, the, the, the Judean desert in what would be today modern Jordan, there was a wilderness and in that wilderness was a little scrubby tree. It wasn't much to look at. It, it wouldn't be something that you would want to plant in your yard. It wasn't anything that you would desire to have. It, was, it, it, wasn't the, it didn't have any particularly attractive flower, and, the, and its foliage wouldn't give you shade, and, and, it, and it was really kind of scruffy looking. But inside of it flowed a medicinal quality from its, from its sap. From, from, from the inside of the tree, it was known all over the known world for, for its healing factors and for its, for its medicinal quality, the, the balm that came out of Gilead, that came from the balsam tree when you would mix it with some olive oil that it had medicinal qualities. Was there no one to carry? He says, is there no balm? Is there no healing? Is there no physician? in the land was the cry of his heart. I can't help but think of today, I, I was, Heather was teaching in Sunday school this morning and I started looking on my phone and, and started just thinking about the hour that we live in. We know the news. We've talked about that the last few weeks. We know the things that are going on. We don't have to catch you up to speed on all of that. But we, we, as we were talking about a, a completely different subject this morning, I began to think of the, heart, of the cry of the, of the people of the earth today where we're looking for peace, but there is no peace. I began to think of people that are looking everywhere for the answer, but they're finding no answer. How do I know that they're looking everywhere this morning? I just began to look up in just the United States alone that there's some 19 million alcoholics. That one in eight adults are, are, are involved in some kind of, of illicit drug. That the staggering statistic is that of adults 20 years old to 30 years old, that a full 25% are either drug addicted or alcoholics. 25%. One in four. And that's just the alcohol and the illegal drugs. Never mind all the prescriptions that are written just to try to give someone peace. Just to try to give them a night's rest. Just enough to be able to make it through the day. Never mind the trips to a guru or a therapist or a psychiatrist or a psychologist just to try to find a way to 
hope. Not even really at that point for happiness, just to make it to the next week. Where the barrenness of the land, we've came to the place as in Jeremiah's day where we don't even know how to blush. Nothing sets us back all that much anymore. Is there anything that surprises you anymore? Any depth of depravity that we can reach to that even causes us to stop and, and have just a moment of, of a hot flush to our face? Is there no balm in Gilead? This was a desperate time in the nation of Israel that reflects the desperate time that we live in. But I, I didn't come for the bad news today. I, want, I mean, we want you to know what, was being, what, the, what the stage was about, what he was prophesying of, and the reason. It's because the people of God were in a desperate position. See, we've got to have a solution more than a bottle. We've got to have, we've got to be able to offer something more than a prescription. We've got to be able to offer something more than a counselor. Listen, there, there's some, there's some, there's some, there's some uh, benefit in having an ear to hear and, and some solid scriptural, biblical advice to be given. There certainly, the Bible talks about the role of a counselor, certainly. I will say this, if, you, if somebody's not counseling you out of, out of and from the Word of God, they have nothing for you. I don't care what their titles and what their degrees hold. They're, that's the foolishness of men's wisdom. We don't need the more foolishness of men's wisdom. We need a demonstration of the power of the Spirit of God. Again, we're a broken people in a broken nation, in a broken world. We've got is there no bomb. What was Jeremiah saying? He was saying, is there not a solution anywhere? There's got to be. He was, it was a cry from the heart of a broken prophet. Is there no solution? Is there no, is there no remedy? Is there no physician to carry the good news? Church, We've got, to, we've got to change the atmosphere. We've, we've got to realize who we are and what we have. I read, I don't even remember where I read it, but during this pandemic, that in our major cities, New York, L.A., Houston, Chicago, and so forth, that the suicide rate in the last year is up 100 and 85%. Is our task nearly completed? Oh no. It's only just begun. Is there no bomb in Gilead? See the imagery and the and the and the and the foreshadowing and the pictures that Jeremiah was beginning to paint was to look towards the one who could bring the answer. See this 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 balm, this this soothing salve, this this healing quality was a was a looking forward to see the, in, in the days of the prophet the balm of Gilead, the balm that they carried was the word of God that the prophet carried to the people. In our day, it was the word that became flesh and dwelled among us. Jesus Christ is the balm of Gilead. He is the one who brings healing. He is the one who brings restoration. He is the one that changes and turns around situations when it looks like there is no way that we have got to carry the balm 
with us today. It is the Word. It is His presence. It is His Spirit. It is His power. It is, it is Him in us. It is, it, it said, is there no physician in the land? Of course, we know that Jesus is the great physician, but He empowers His people to carry the balm. He empowers His people to take the Word. He called us and demanded and commissioned us to go into all the world and preach the Gospel, to bring the Word, to bring the balm to the land that where, there's, where they cry for peace and there is no peace. So do you want, you want to know why we're drinking ourselves to death? Because they're crying for peace and there is no peace. Do you know why that, that our young people are dying by the thousands because they're overdosing on fentanyl and, and, and every other opioid in the world and, 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 and taking overdoses of this and that? Do you want to know why they're consumed in illicit sex and going from partner to partner to partner to partner? It's not because they've lost their mind. and they don't, It's because they're looking for peace and they have no peace. They're looking for something to fill the void where they come because they feel alone in this old world, this cold and cruel place. They're looking for something that will that will make it, that will stand in and, and make them feel like they're a part of something bigger than them. They're crying out for help. They're crying for peace. And it's not there. To the place that we don't blush. Where we don't know what to do. Where, we're, where, we're, where, where we've become the greatest, I've said it before, we've became, the church has become the greatest referral agency in the world. <laughs> we know what referrals are nowadays with this broken down medical system that we have where you, everything you go to do, you've got to have somebody refer you to a referral to, so you can have a referral to get to the referral. Passing you around like a cheap commodity whenever you just need an answer. The church is doing the same thing. We've got to, we've got to bring the balm. We're the one who carries it. See, we used to. I, I, I see. I'm not. I'm not pining for the great, for the good old days. Let me just tell you that. I'm not. I'm not trying to go back to Grandma's religion and 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 the things that Wigglesworth done and 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 to the great pioneers of the faith. They're dead and they're gone. But I can tell you there was a time whenever, whenever Peter walked and John walked up to a temple to a lame man that had been there for 40 years and they, and they didn't send him down the street to someone else and they didn't even pay him off. He, said, he was looking at them asking for alms. They said, we don't have any money to give you, but what I have, I see what they had was the balm of Gilead. What they had was the great physician. What they had was his authority. What they had was his power. They said, we don't have any money to give you. We don't have anything at all to pass on to you. But such as I have, I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And it says his, immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength and he jumped up and he began leaping and dancing and praising God. They could have sent him somewhere. They could have referred him to somebody else. But instead, they came in as a physician with the power of the balm of Gilead and touched their lives and it changed them forever. Everybody. Listen, there would have been a Nineveh that would have been wiped out if a Jonah hadn't reluctantly carried the balm. There would have been a family of Lot that would have perished in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah when the wrath of God began to pour out if an Abraham hadn't given the balm to his family their whole life and they knew in whom they had believed that they had a father of their faith. There would have been a Rahab that would have died. There, would have, there was a prostitute named Rahab that would have died with the rest of the people of Jericho. But there was a bomb that came in with the spies of the land that brought the Word of God and says, if you will stay, if you will, if you will hang the, the thread of redemption, if you will hang the scarlet thread out your window, whenever we come, you and your household will be spared. Listen, church, there is still a bomb in Gilead. 
There's still a bomb. He's still the answer. He's still the one. He's still the healer. He's still the one that saves. He's still the one that brings us hope. He's the one that will break the bondage of addiction off of your life. He is the one that will deliver you from all your lustful passions. He is the one that will put your family back together when it seems that there is no hope that they'll ever be restored. He is the one that in a broken world will give you peace where you can lay down your head at night and, and, and sleep in the, in the rest of the Lord. He is the one that will keep your children children safe when they're running wild and you don't know where they're at. He, there is still a bomb in Gilead today. There is still a bomb. He's the one that will reach that, that will reach that spouse, that will reach that wife, that will reach that husband when they seem unreachable, when they're miserable in their own skin. Have you ever met that person that's just miserable in their own skin? He's the one that will apply the ointment that will heal their, their, their shattered heart and their broken spirit and that will woo them with the love of God that will bring them in. He's still, they're still a physician and they're still a healing balm in Him. When you look at the news and watch the news and you watch the stupidity and that's what it is. When you watch the, the demon-possessed and the demon-driven uh, rebellions of, the, of our leadership, that's, and that's what it is. He said, you want to know that they're, they're de when you're deceived to the point of delusion, whenever the evil is good and good is evil and, and whenever every road you take is wrong, there's, there are spiritual factors that are controlling lives that are leading us astray and the nation may go to hell in a handbasket but I can tell you that there's a people and there's a and there's still a, there's still a, a, a bomb in the land of, of, of Judah that if you'll apply that if, you, that if you'll apply it to your life it'll break you out of those bonds and it will heal your life it will heal your mind it will deliver your soul and it will keep you sane in a broken pandemic ridden world there is still a bomb in Gilead Oh, you say, is it us? He told us, he told us in Matthew chapter 10, he said, you go. He said, go, he said, don't go to your house. Go to the lost sheep of Israel. Go to the, go out into the brokenness. He says, and heal the sick and deliver them from their afflictions. You go. He said, Jesus was talking to his apostles, to the disciples. They said, you go and take me. Take the balm. Take the ointment. Take the remedy. Listen, church, there is still a remedy. To everything you see going on, there is still an answer. If we come and all we did was scream at the darkness and rail against the oppression and, 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 and fight against the political powers that be, we would, end up, we would just end up a broken heap and a mass, us against the world, that we would never get anywhere, ever. But if we know that in Him, in His Word, in His presence, by His Spirit, that there is still a remedy, there's still an answer that it can, it can and will change people's life. It may be you today sitting here. It may be you today watching by, by live stream. You may watch it later. And I come by just for a minute to tell you that all, when the world's crying peace and you can't find it, whenever the, whenever the, every time the government offers an answer, it's just another mess. Whenever you don't know if the job's going to be there, you don't know if the spouse is going to leave, if your kids are ever going to call, whenever you're, whenever you're screaming in the darkness and you don't know what to do, there's still an answer. There's still a bomb in Gilead. There's still a physician in the land, and he will still answer your cry. He will still come and apply the, the oil of the Spirit to your situation. He will still come and take your brokenness. He'll still come, and he will, tra he will tra give you a trade-off that he will take your oppression and give you a robe and give you a robe of joy yes he'll change your life he'll change your life you say i've heard about religion all of my life listen i'm not talking about the death of religion religion stinks it smells like a corpse it'll drag you down with it i'm talking about the one who will come and change your situation oh he's never been much to look at <laughs> See, that bomb, that, that balsam tree, it never was much to look at. 
Isaiah prophesied about this one that was the bomb, this one that would, that was the great physician. He said there was nothing that when you look at him that he was anything to look at. He wasn't. He said he won't be beautiful to behold. He said, but he was wounded for my transgressions. He'll be bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace will be upon him, and by your stripes you'll be healed. Peter said, by his stripes. I was healed. Past tense. It's a done deal. Listen. Hey, care. One day in a in a prison, Paul carried the bomb to a jailer that was about to kill himself. He said, "Do yourself no harm. We're all here." See, he didn't he didn't have any bail money. He didn't have a counselor. He didn't have a lawyer, but he had the bomb. The bomb that kept him from running whenever he needed to stay. The one that kept him safe whenever it should have shook everything and killed them in the dungeon. He says, we're still here. And he began to present the healer and the mender and, and, the, and the counselor to a people. And it says that they all got saved that day. They all got saved that day. Even when he was in a Philippian jail, <laughs> riding in a hole in the ground where they were just lowering through, he, he began to write things like that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, he didn't write that on the mountaintop. He wrote that in a hole in the ground. Why? Because he had the bomb. Because he knew the physician. Because he, he could be inspired by the one that created it all to bring the answer even from, his, from the worst situation you can imagine. Listen, he'll heal your heart. He'll heal your family. He'll, he'll, he'll change your life. Somebody in the, in the room, somebody watching needs to know it's not hopeless. The answer is not at the end of a gun in your mouth or a mouthful of pills, or a bottle of whiskey, or another partner. The answer is in the book. The answer comes by the power of His Spirit. The answer comes in a surrendered life. That was, you said, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, he said, it's foolishness to the world. You say, it can't be that simple. It's that simple. Oh, it's not, a, it's not a turning over a new leaf. If you're just going to turn over a new leaf, the next wind that blows the other way, I'll just blow it back over. It's not turning over a new leaf. It's not anything like that. It's not a new leaf. It's a new life. It's, it's a fundamental change. It'll make you something into somebody else. It, if a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. All things become new. Listen, I'll tell you in this desperate world, in this desperate world we're in, there is still a bomb in Gilead. Listen, we're not hopeless today. Church, we're not hopeless today. He's still with us. And I got, listen, I got news for all of us. He chose us for today. He could have created us anywhere and put us at any point in time. I don't spend any time thinking, boy, if I'd have just lived in the days of Wigglesworth, man, the things we'd have saw. Or the great tense healing evangelists, Oral Roberts and those guys, if I'd have just been in there, I know he, he, he knew exactly who I was, when he needed me. He knew, he knew what was going to be going on on this earth, and he knew that he would still need a people that would, that would, that would come with the physician, with the, with the, with the bomb. That we that he would still that it, he he put us in a time like today for such a time as this. It's not by accident. You say, I don't know if I can cope with it. I don't know, I don't know if I can handle it. There may be somebody today and you're in your last moment. You said, if something doesn't change in my life, I'm not gonna see tomorrow. You know that's on a lot of people's heart today. More people than we had ever wanted to imagine. There's, there's some people already that wouldn't be here if they just could get up just a little more nerve. If, they, if, they, if they'd had just, if, if, you know, if they, if they could just 
I, I, I would do it. I just can't bring myself to pull the trigger. I can't bring myself to swallow the pills. I can't bring myself to empty the bottle. I just can't do it. But there's no answer in that. Right now, maybe it's the first time in years you've heard of hope. Maybe you've never heard there's hope. Maybe you never heard that there's an answer that will change your life. You say, will it change my life? I can point to people all over this building and all. The, I can point to people, a lot of people that could stand this morning and say, I was there, it changed my life. This bomb, the bomb of Gilead, the word of God, the Jesus, the son that comes in by the power of the Holy Spirit that, that will take a broken pile and a broken mess and make it something completely beautiful and something completely brand new. They will testify to you today that no matter what's going on in the world where there is no peace, that the Prince of Peace can walk into your life today and completely change your situation. Mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, there's a prodigal out there somewhere that you have prayed until you don't know what else to pray. That you have cried and you've groaned and you've brought it to God and you, and you may be even asking yourself, is it ever going to happen? What you're really asking, what, what, is, there, is there a bomb in Gilead? Is there a physician in the land? Don't give up. You keep praying. You keep giving. Hey, it had a fragrance. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. I didn't even plan on talking about it, but somebody needs to hear it this morning. With that, lo with that lost child, that lost grandchild, that lost spouse, and you've said, you've prayed, you've done everything you know to do, it gets worse rather than better. I'm going to tell you that that balm had a fragrance. There was an aroma that was, that was a pleasant scent. There, there was a smell. The ladies even then used it at times as a perfume, as an, as an attraction. I'm going to tell you, keep applying the balm to your life because it has a fragrance. And they're going to catch the scent. They're going to catch the scent of the healer. They're going to catch the scent of the deliverer. Catch the fragrance of the Savior. They're going to say, what is that? You ever, had, you ever caught somebody's scent and you said, what is that? Don't give up. Don't give in. There is still a bomb in Gilead. There is still a physician in the land. There's still hope for today and tomorrow. There's still a mender of the broken heart. There's still one that changes the direction. Heavenly Father, I thank you today that there is a balm of Gilead and there is a physician in the land. Lord, I ask you today that the scent of the balm would permeate the room in a supernatural spiritual sense. Maybe the live stream, maybe someone sitting in their living room, driving down the road, with, have their AirPods in. Maybe somebody that's watching right now, maybe it'll be a week, two weeks, six months from now, and you'll happen across this on YouTube, and the fragrance of the balm would come to where you're at and draw you near and begin to heal your wounded heart, begin to change who you are, make you something completely new. Maybe you're in this room today, and today you need the bomb. It could be salvation. It could be a broken heart. It could be you have 
things going on and maybe you, just you and the Lord know about that you're just you're tired of the struggle and you need to, you need to break free from and need a deliverance listen if that's you today there's still a balm in Gilead and a physician in the land he's here right now this moment and he wants to apply it to your life if you're in this room I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand I'm going to ask you to stand up if you're in this room right now, don't, let, listen, don't, don't let fears and pressure and, and, and nervousness and, and any of those things hold you back from a changed life. Don't let it do it. Stand up where you're at right now. I'm going to tell you, you've tried everything else. It didn't embarrass you. Uh, the, you wasn't embarrassed about the other crazy stuff you tried. Why don't you try the one that can change your life? If that's you and you're in the room, won't you stand up this morning? There's going to be people that love you that's going to stand with you and meet you here. If that's you. I'm not, going to, I'm, not, I'm not going to beg and I'm not going to wait long. If that's you today. Maybe you're watching my live stream today. You say, what do I do? I said, it's, it's, it's real simple. Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. He said, but you know what? There's more to, the, to living for God than being saved. There's more to the bomb than I'm not going to hell. There's, I, can, I can have the change broken off of my life. He can restore, He can deliver, and He will. In this house, whether you stood or not, which you didn't, whether you stood or didn't stand, if you're watching and, you, and you're, you're not even here to stand, it's, see, it's not about, it's about a step of faith, and it's about following Him. Listen, church, as, you, as everybody stands in the house right now, everybody's standing. Listen, church. The one who is the answer. I remind us often. It says in Matthew. He said I send you. I send you. He said you go out. You go out. And take the news. He said you go out. And, and save and heal and deliver. You say well I can't heal or deliver. If you've got the power of God. It said that the same spirit that, dwelt, that raised Christ from the dead. Dwell also in you. It'll make your mortal body alive. He'll do the same in you that he did in him. Jesus said greater works than these. Come on church. We got to believe it again. We got to believe it church. That it's a hopeless dying world. And we have the remedy. We have the answer. He said, greater works than these shall you do. spoke to me dear praise and worship I believe you give me something I really thought there was going to be a tongues and this is going to be the interpretation I've never spoke out without tongues so I was waiting and it didn't happen but I went back there and I wrote it down and everything Pastor preaches goes along with it but he just I wasn't sure if I was going to step out and say it but what he just said I am here with you today, and I inhabit the praises of my people. I am here to do a new thing. I will hear, heal your weary soul. This land and these people will try every way to keep you apart and divided, separated. Where two or more are together in my name, I am there. My body needs to be together in one accord, not letting anything come between you. I will do a new thing. I will pour out my power. I will pour out new life. Speak to the dry bones. 
the things that seem to have no way of return. Give me a chance to show you my power that I may be glorified. Chance. It says, give me a chance to show you my power that I might be glorified. Mark, it said, it's good that you speak in a tongue, but it's better that you prophesy. He says, give me the chance to show you my power. This morning, all across this place, that's the cry from the Spirit Himself, is give you the chance to show His power in your life. All across this place, if you would, if you would, would, would you just gather, come, come forward and gather across the place from front to fr- from, in the front from side to side. The only thing the Lord requires of us to see these things is two things. Is A, we got to believe Him. We got to believe that He, that He, well, not that He will, that He is. (laughs) So what He said, He said, they come to me, must first believe that I am. And I'm a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. We got to first believe that He is. Yes? And then we've got to act. That means us. It's, it, you got to make a move. James said, faith without works is dead. <laughs> so we got to believe him that he is. And we've got to make a move. Say, so why do we stand sometimes? Because we got to get out of our seat. we got to make a move. Sometimes it's a physical act that will just break the move. And, and, and it's all a spiritual act. On our part. A demonstration. Right? All across this place. All across this place. Today is today to, to make a commitment. Yeah. Today is the day to step out. Maybe it's for yourself that you just need to get alone even in the crowd between you and God and say, apply the balm to my life. Husband, maybe today is the day that you need to step out from behind the, the shadows and step up and be the spiritual leader of your home and, and bring the balm to the household and the physician to the house. But all of us today is our commission to go out, to go to our home, go to our workplace, go to, go to uh, wherever we're at to bring the remedy. We, it's, got, it's us. No one else is going to do it. And no one, frankly, no one else is shy or intimidated. We are. Why is that? Why are we the one that's hiding in the shadows and afraid to open our mouth? Why? We have the remedy. Can we pray together? Can we pray together? Present yourself. And then we're, Father, here we are. Lord, we've heard, we've heard your word. We've heard your spirit. We've heard the gifts of the spirit today. It says if you'll, just, if you'll just act on it. If you'll just step out. If you will just be the one. I'll do what I said I will do. I'll be who I said I will be. It's not just an empty book. It's not just empty rhetoric. I'll be, I'll be in your life. I'll be the one that changes the situation, that breaks the bondage, that brings the prodigal home, that comes in power, that brings deliverance and healing to the broken. I'll be the one that gives peace. Peace. Wonderful. Peace. I'll act. That's what has to be settled in your heart today, church. I'm, not gonna, I'm no longer going to wait on anyone else. That, I, that here I am. That's what Isaiah said. Here I am. Send me. Send me. There's still a bomb 
in Gilead. There's still a physician in the land. Step out. Step out and go. Step out and go. Father, we need your power. We need your strength. Open your word. Lord, let the, let the healing oil flow today. Lord, pour in the oil of joy for our morning. Give us beauty for ashes. Lord, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, that you apply the balm to our wounded soul. Lord, that, the, that you bring us closer to you, that you draw us in. And Lord, that you give us things that we can give away because you bring us through. Lord, rescue the wounded and the broken today. Send them from every direction as we go and compel them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Surely the presence. Sing it, Brandon. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. Oh, I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. going to do anything to disturb the ones that certainly that the Lord is working in their lives even as we speak standing and kneeling it's in his presence so there don't have to be thundering and lightning and storms and tornadoes in his presence I mean Pentecostal people think if we're not swinging from the rafters and climbing the pews and running down the aisles that God's not doing anything and I'm for all that I like it but I know that there was a prophet that said that, that there was a firestorm and it, he wasn't in the storm. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the tornado. He wasn't, when he was looking for, where was he? He was in a still, small voice. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place and it's in his presence. It's in, the, it's in that small voice. It's just in obedience to what he comes in the quietness and says. It's where the change comes, where the healing takes place, where the deliverance is at. It's not in the noise, it's in the presence. 
If you need something for him, don't. If you need to slide out, you feel free to do that. But don't. But don't leave today until you have a peace in your heart that you know you've been in His presence, and that's where, that's where what you need is at. Sing it. Sing the verse. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel. His mighty power and His grace. I can can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There's a holy hush around us as As God's God's glory fills this place. I've touched the hem of His garment. I can almost see His face. And my heart is overflowing with the fullness of the Lord. And I know without a doubt I have been with the Lord. Oh, and surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and and His His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on His face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory. On his face. Oh, surely, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. In these closing moments, can we do one thing before we leave? Can we lift up Teresa and Melinda and Tom this morning that they, Brother Richard's family, that the, Melanie, yes. That we would, that there would, the Comforter would come today. Lord, we lift them up, Hargrove's family. Lord, and where they're at right now, Lord, He's in Your presence. Faith, faith has become sight for Him today. But for the ones left behind, Lord, that that that, that with the legacy of Richard Hargraves, a godly man, <laughs> a powerful man. Lord, that you would, that the Comforter would come. And not only that the Comforter would come, but that, but that his mantle would be picked up in his absence and carried on on the earth because we need him. We need him. We need your spirit. We need, we need men and women that will flow in your gifts. Lord, that, we, that, the, that the legacy of his godliness would continue. We pray today in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Surely the presence. Shake somebody's hand. Hug somebody's neck. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. The brush of angels' wings, I see glory on each face. Surely the presence 